Hi, my name's Chris. Welcome to my studio. I want to talk to you in this video how I use bulk watercolor paper for my paintings. There's my paper. Let me show you how I use it. When I purchase my paper in bulk, it comes in a box like this. This is Arches 140 pound cold press. This is 10 yards of paper. This particular roll of paper is 10 yards long and it is 45 inches wide. So that's quite a bit of paper. It's actually a little over 112 square feet of paper in one roll. So that's a lot of paper. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about both the pros and the cons of purchasing your paper in this way. There are advantages, there are a few disadvantages, uh, but I like, I like having a lot of paper on hand. First of all, the first advantage or first pro is simply you have a lot of paper. You don't, are not as likely to run out of paper. And uh, I like that, I like having a big quantity of paper on hand so I'm not constantly ordering or constantly running to the store. Advantage number two. And that is simply that you can cut, or in this case, rip this paper in any size uh, that you want. So if you want a bunch of real small format paper, you can rip it that way. If you want a larger painting, you can do so. I have found that when you purchase your paper uh, in this format, which is probably one of the most common formats as a pad or as a block, you're limited, in this case, to the 10 by 14 inches. And um, you can rip it smaller, but you can't get bigger. And um, I like to have the option of having larger size format when I paint. And so that's a second advantage to purchasing it in bulk. The third obvious benefit of bulk paper is just the cost. It costs less per inch or per square foot to purchase your paper this way. I did some calculating. I bought this whole roll in 2019 for $166 US. Uh, I was purchasing it off Amazon. I'll have the link below. I just looked it up now. This is a few months later and it's running at $192. So prices, price is obviously fluctuating. Um, but even at the $192 per roll, I found that this is costing me about one cent per square inch. Okay, and I go through a lot of square inches of paper, so one cent. When I, when I calculated the exact same paper, uh, same weight and type of paper purchased in a pad, I found this was running around two cents per square inch. So that's twice as expensive to buy it this way as this, almost twice. And, and when you start going through a lot of paper like I do, this is cost effective. And I guess uh, the last advantage that I would talk about in terms of purchasing it as bulk is the ability to rip your own paper and get this really cool deckled edge. I think you can see that here. Uh, I like that. I like that look on my finished pieces. And the only way to get that is to rip your paper. When you purchase it again on a pad, uh, the paper is cut and has very uh, straight cut edges. You could rip that, of course, but then you're kind of wasting paper, uh, that part of the paper that you're ripping off and getting rid of around the edges. So I like this deckled edge. This comes, of course, when you rip the paper, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a bit. I'm going to encourage you to watch this video right through to the end, and at the end I'll talk a little bit about the downsides or the cons of purchasing your paper this large. But for now, let's go forward and show you how I rip the paper. All right, you obviously need a big workspace in order to do this. And so here I am in my studio and I have set out my paper, rolled it out on the paper. You want to roll it out somewhere clean uh, where you can work at it. And I like to work at waist height here. And so I love this table. I have a few heavy objects here in my studio that I just use to lay this paper out and keep it from rolling back on itself. The first consideration when ripping your paper is to make sure you cut or rip it in uh, a straight line and a line that is square to the edges. So I went ahead and purchased a large construction square. Let me show it to you. This is actually a drywall square. 
Uh, I looked for large architect squares and that kind of thing online and found them to be very expensive. Anything that's related to the arts or architecture, things like that, tend to be really, in my opinion, overpriced. So I simply went to the Home Depot store. Maybe you have a home improvement store like that near you and see if you can find like a drywall square. It's nice because it's 48 inches. This long edge is 48 inches, which is a couple inches longer than my paper. My paper again is 45 inches wide. So this allows me to span the entire width of the paper and to do so and make sure I'm maintaining square. Once I've done that, I wanna mark it with a pencil. I've decided in this particular case, I want my paper to be a little bit over 12 inches wide. Uh, I'm going to go for 12 and a half. That gives me a quarter inch for my tape margin on both sides. So 12 and a half inches. I'll move my square into that position. Again, I check for square. And then once I've done that, I'm ready to mark my paper with my pencil. I'm just going to mark it every 10 to 12 inches or so across here. I don't use this square to rip with because I find it's a little bit big and unwieldy, but instead I'm going to bring in another straight edge and now lay that straight edge along the series of marks that I've made here on the paper and then rip it. All right, now I have my straight edge. This is just a 15 inch straight edge. Maybe you have one that's even longer, might be helpful. Uh, I'm going to place this now on the outside of the lines that I just laid down and um, I'm going to start ripping. You're going to find that ripping the paper is actually quite easy. Again, this is a 140 pound paper, so it is fairly thick and heavy. As you rip, you want to make sure that the ruler or straight edge doesn't move. Make sure you don't rip right up to the edge of the straight edge, just because you might get kind of a uh, uneven rip at that point. Might rip right past the ruler. So then move it down and keep going. I'm going nice and carefully along here. And there you go. I have a perfectly ripped 12 inch wide piece of watercolor paper, 140 pound cold press. Now, of course, I'm just going to decide what widths I want on this. I could either make it uh, 12 inches by say 16 inches if I wanted a longer piece, or it could be 12 inches by say nine inches this way, making it a different format the other direction. So I have a lot of options now. I have my standard 12 inch across, but now I can go ahead and rip it in any width I want. Because this paper is overall 45 inches long, I find that obviously it, it divides into nine inch widths really nicely. Nine times five is 45. So I'll often mark it every nine inches. Go ahead and mark it and then just rip them in nine because nine by 12 is a really common size that I work in and I really like that, that format. So I've got my little tape measure and I'm just gonna go ahead now and mark this every nine inches. Now that I have my marks uh, made on the paper, I can simply use my straight edge again, holding it down and rip up against the ruler or straight edge. Most important thing is just to make sure your ruler doesn't move as you rip. So there you go. Just like that, I have five pieces of nine by 12 watercolor paper ripped out of my large, uh, my large roll and I'm ready to go. One thing to keep in mind is that this kind of pad and this pad costs $32 currently on Amazon. This pad only has 12 sheets in it. So I can rip, I can do what I've just done. Oh, two and a half times or so here. And I will have more paper than what I have in this entire pad at $32. 
All right, let's go on and talk a little bit about the disadvantages. Maybe you can see the primary disadvantage of this method right now, and that is this, okay? I don't have flat paper, and that can be a problem uh, because I want, uh, obviously, I don't want to paint on a surface like this. And so usually what I do is I have, I do a lot of this uh, preparation of paper all at once. I maybe spend, oh, I don't know, a half an hour, 45 minutes preparing paper by ripping and all that. And then I set it aside and maybe set it aside for a few days. And I put this underneath weight, weighted objects, and I get it to flatten. And it usually flattens out quite nicely. Then, of course, I take my boards that I paint on and I tape it down and I'm ready to paint. I don't have a problem with the roll at all. A second disadvantage that you might consider is simply the time it takes to do this process. Uh, if I go out and buy paper like this, it might be more expensive, but all I have to do is open up the pad, rip out a piece, and I'm ready to paint. And um, that's a lot easier at saving time. So, you know, I, but I guess time is, is money. Um, so if you would rather just uh, rip your paper out of a pad and paint that way, that's certainly fine. Uh, because if you do it this way, you're going to have to spend a little time preparing your paper. And the only other final disadvantage I could think of in this approach to preparing your watercolor paper or purchasing your watercolor paper is simply that you are committed once you buy this for somewhere around $175 to $200, once you purchase it, you're committed until you go through this roll to this weight, type, and texture of paper. So you don't have a lot of variety. If you decide you want to switch over to a rough texture or a hot press, well, you have uh, all of this cold press paper, uh, as you see here, to... You already have all that paper that you've, you've invested in. And so you don't maybe have as, uh, the option for as much variety. I guess you could buy a roll of each type, hot press and uh, cold press and rough. Um, but when you do this, it's an investment and you're kind of committed to that, at least I am, uh, to painting on this texture. Now that to me is not a problem because I've determined that I like 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton paper, and it is what I want to paint on. And I don't want to try other or use other papers because this is what I like to paint on. So for me, it's not a problem, but some people might consider that a disadvantage. So there you go. There's an overview of purchasing bulk watercolor paper. I've listed advantages and disadvantages. I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Primarily, the advantages that, I, that mean the most to me are simply the cost, the lower cost, almost by half of what it would cost to buy otherwise, as well as the variety of sizes that I can use and create, as well as just having lots of paper on hand. If you've liked this video and found it helpful, please like the video so that more people can find it on YouTube. If you'd like, you could also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you stay informed the next time I put out a new video. Thanks and have a great day.